Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to go about downloading and installing Windows 11 on your Windows 10 computer. So the day has arrived, Windows 11 is available now for upgrade or install on computers. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to download the official Windows 11 ISO from Microsoft, as well as the accompanying media creation utility. So this should hopefully be a pretty straightforward process, guys. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So all you have to do is open up a web browser of your choice. I'm going to open up Google Chrome for today's tutorial, but you're welcome to open up any web browser you choose. And you just want to go over and navigate to google.com, just so we're all at the same part of the video. And you want to search for Windows 11 Media Creation Tool. And go ahead and search for that. One of the best results should be a Microsoft.com web page here. It says Download Windows 11. Go ahead and open that up. So you can see right here, it says download Windows 11. There are three options below for installing or creating Windows 11 media. Check out each one to determine the best option for you. If you're upgrading from Windows 10, we recommend that you wait until you're notified through Windows Update that the upgrade is ready for your PC. So basically, they're just throttling the updates for right now, just so that not everybody's getting updated at the same time. They're doing a phased rollout. I believe they're looking to get that finished by early next year. But if you want to get your hands on it right now, we're going to have to just download the installation media. So you can see there's a Windows 11 installation assistant here, which will just tell you basically if your device is ready to be compatible with Windows 11. Now, you can install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, quote unquote. It may not perform as well, but just keep that in mind. You can run the PC Help Checker app. So that's a different tutorial you guys can check out. So if we're just going to go about installing it, you have a couple options here. So if you go down further here, you can create Windows 11 installation media. So if you want to perform a reinstall or a clean install of Windows 11 on a new or used PC, use this option to download the media creation tool to make a bootable USB or DVD. You can select that. And you can also select uh, download Windows 11 disk image. And then if you select the little drop down arrow, you can select just basically Windows 11 here. There's no 32-bit option for Windows 11 anymore, so just keep that in mind. So basically, at this point, you just go ahead and make your selection. I'm going to create the Windows 11 installation media here just by selecting the Download Now button. And it's only about 10 megabytes in size, so not too big. Just go ahead and open up that file to run it. And select Yes if you receive a user account control prompt. And you want to go ahead and accept the end user license terms here. Just go ahead and select that. And you want to go ahead and select your correct language, as well as the addition of Windows 11. It's only giving you one option at the time of this recording, so go ahead and select Next. So at this point, if you want to burn it to a USB flash drive, you can just select the USB flash drive option, or you can select the ISO file. So you'll need to burn the ISO file to a DVD later if you choose to do that method. Or you can just run it directly from your desktop too, so either way here is fine. And you notice for your USB flash drive, it needs to be at least 8 gigabytes. I noticed for the Insider builds, it was about 4.5 gigabytes, um, just from the ISO files that I have looked at. However, I believe it has gone up above 5 gigabytes. So in either event, you would still need a larger flash drive. So they want you to have at least an 8 gigabyte flash drive for Windows 11 here. So go ahead and select Next. And now you'll select the location if you're doing the ISO file directory here. So I'm just going to save it to my desktop for right now. And again, I'm just going to name this file Windows 11 ISO. And again, you can see we're kind of going down our own custom path here, but you're welcome to select the USB flash drive option and boot your computer from it, or just run it directly from within the flash drive. It's fine, but I'm just going to save it to my desktop here. This will take a couple minutes to download, so just please be patient. And I think it is important to point out, before you actually install Windows 11 here, you definitely want to make sure you have everything backed up on your system. So before you proceed, if you have to save anything, and just making sure you have your important files and documents backed up, because whenever you're installing Windows, you always run the risk of data loss. So just want to put that out there, guys, before we proceed.
Okay, so at this point, you go ahead and open a DVD burner if you want to burn it to a DVD. But you can see the ISO file has been created on our desktop here. And just for the sake of curiosity, let's go check and see how large this ISO file is. So it's about 4.16 gigabytes in size at the time of this recording. Now that is likely going to change as we get further along. There are more updates available, but just so you guys are aware, it's about 4 gigabytes in size at the moment. So we can go ahead and select finish. It's going to finish up the setup process. Now at this point, you can go ahead and actually open up this ISO file and then run the setup file. However, I will actually boot off of a USB flash drive, so I'm actually going to just take this and put it on a flash drive here and boot my computer off of it. So once I'm back on my boot menu, I'm going to jump back in with the tutorial. So I just restarted my system, and the ISO file, in your case, probably was already put into a flash drive or a DVD. So you want to get to your boot menu if you're going to go down my method here. So in order to get to the boot menu, if you're not sure, you may have to look up your specific computer manufacturer. But generally, it's the escape key, F2, F8, or F12. It's one of the function keys on top of your keyboard. And you want to select whatever your bootable media device is that you've installed Windows on. Do you have Windows installed? So if you did the USB flash drive method, or if you burn it to a DVD, we're going to go ahead and just select that from the boot menu here. So in my case, it would be the CD-ROM drive if it was a DVD. That's where I have it set up for my machine here, but a lot of you guys probably would have a flash drive option, so you would go ahead and select that, and just go ahead and hit Enter once you made that selection using your arrow keys to go up and down. Press any key to boot from the DVD. Go ahead and select the correct language, time and currency format, and keyboard or input method. And go ahead and select next. And then select the install now button. And at this point, if you have a product key, go ahead and enter it. If you're upgrading from a Windows 10 computer, you shouldn't have to enter in a product key here. So in either case, you can select I don't have a product key. It will not be activated. But I just want to put that out there, guys. So anyway, select the operating system you want to install. So I'm going to select the applicable version for my situation here, which is the professional version. So basically, if you're upgrading from Windows 10 Home Edition, you're going to go to Windows 11 Home. That's the one you're going to select if you're even given this option to begin with. If you are upgrading from Windows 10 Professional, you'll select the Windows 11 Pro option. So again, just make sure you select the correct um, upgrade path for your machine. And once you've made your selection, you're going to go ahead and select Next.
Okay, so go ahead and select your correct country from this list and select yes. Select the correct keyboard layout and then yes again. If you want to add a second keyboard layout, you can. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and select skip. We want to accept the license agreement. You want to name your PC here. It doesn't matter what you want to name it, just name it your name, I guess. And then select next. So it needs to be no more than 15 characters and no spaces or special characters. So I'm just going to call it John and then next. Give it a moment here. So how would you like to set up your device? You can set up for personal use or set up for work and school. I'm going to set up for personal use and then I'm going to select next. So if you want to sign in with a Microsoft account, you can. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and turn off our internet. And then we're going to select the back arrow. And then we're going to go ahead and try and create a local account. So if you have an Ethernet connection to your computer, you want to disconnect it. Or if, if you have your router, you want to go ahead and turn that off. And I'm going to go ahead and switch that off here. And give me a moment. And I'm going to select set for personal use. And then next. Again, go ahead and enter in your computer name. Keep in mind, I just turned off my network connection here. And now I'm just going to go ahead and enter in a computer name. It has to be different than your other name. And then select Next. Go ahead and create a password if you choose to do so. Otherwise, just go ahead and select Next. Again, I just turned off my network connection and went back a couple steps. And now you see it's letting me create a local user account on my computer instead of a Microsoft account. So that's the only way you got to do it. You have to actually disconnect from the internet and then Microsoft will let you use a local account. So you can go ahead and choose your privacy settings at this point. Usually I unselect almost all, if not all, of these options, just in my own personal preference, and then I select Accept.
And there you go, guys. Simple as that. And you can go ahead and install your applications, your programs, whatnot. Pretty straightforward process, guys. I do hope I was able to help you out. And I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.